When I first started racing, we actually had two valves. We had like a four valve for the rear and a five valve for the front. Racing was simple. It's not simple anymore. Technology's caught up with it. A lot of money in racing now and a lot of new product. So we can actually fine tune the cars a lot better with shocks. A shock package that I work with a lot, and it can be in the 74 series or the 86 series, the 76 series, um, doesn't really make a difference. The biggest difference is the 76, 86 series has a base valve in it so you can run less gas pressure. And the 74 series is like for the B modifieds, the USRA type modified, the IMCA uh, sport mods, stock cars, etc., where you can't have a bulb. But as far as the valving goes and tuning at the racetrack, a standard valve setup or valving set that, that I work with a lot is tying the right front down, usually uh, with a 23 to 2,500 pound car. Uh, we usually do like an, a three compression, eight rebound on the right front. The left front is a shock I tune with a lot on a heavy racetrack or a standard racetrack. I'll do like a uh, four compression, six rebound, which is a tie down shock. So basically we're tying the nose of the race car down. In the rear, we'll do like a, a three compression, four rebound, or a straight four rebound and compression on the right rear. And then on the left rear, we prop the, the car up with a shock. So we'll do like a, an eight compression and a two rebound. And what we're trying to accomplish there is give the car some attitude so the car wants what we call getting up on the bars or once the car goes dynamic, the back of the car raises up, the left rear gets high, the right front gets down. Well, that actually makes the car go through a corner very well. And that's the shock package that will do that. As the track slicks off, uh, sometimes you gotta take the tie down out of the front for the car to transfer weight from the front to the back to get traction. So with that baseline shock package, the 3.8, the 4.6, the 3.4, and the 8.2, when the track slicks off, I'll change the left front shock. I'll go from a tie down shock to an easy up shock, which is a five compression three rebound. What that does, it lets the car stay up on attitude, but it also lets the car, when the track, when traction is limited or track gets slick, it lets the car transfer weight back from the left front to the right rear. And that's what you want. Just real simple. You don't need a whole lot of shocks. You don't need to do a lot of crazy stuff. And there's a lot of misconception on gas pressure in a, in a monotube shock. You can't really tune with gas pressure. You can crutch a car with gas pressure. Normally on our shocks, you know, you'll have 75, you'll have 50 to 75 pounds of gas pressure everywhere but the left rear. And with the valving in it, we usually have around 150 pounds of gas pressure in the left rear. And what the reason we have that much gas pressure there is there's a lot of velocity in the left rear, so you don't want that shock to cavitate. You can crutch a car with gas pressure. On a rough racetrack, you can put more gas pressure in. On a slick racetrack, you can take gas pressure out. But you don't need to go over 180, 200 pounds on the left rear. And honestly, in the front shocks, without a base valve, you can run 25 to 50 pounds, as long as you don't have a lot of shaft speed, a lot of velocity in it, you know, if the track's smooth. Um, the more valving, the more rebound the shock has, a lot of times you need a little bit more gas pressure so you don't have a cavitation issue. With a base valve shock, you can run 15 pounds on the right side and around 60 to 80 pounds in the, in the left rear. Because the base, base valve works, it keeps pressure on it without having to have a lot of gas pressure in the shock. That's kind of a real baseline setup to go with. There's always tuning capabilities you can go with. Like with a stock car or a car with leaf springs, you can go the other way around. You can actually do an easy up right front and tie down the left rear. But that's more in a drag race mode where you're literally rolling the car through the corner you know, and stand on the gas taking off. So you're not counting on corner speed, you're counting on just pure forward traction.
that's when you want to soften the compression up on the left rear and then take some rebound out of the right front. So basically what I just described is today's dirt track cars. We've kind of went away from the old concept of you need a ton of horsepower and a ton of traction to making these cars really fast through the corners. Um, the lap times on today's cars, the corner speed is just as fast as your straightaway speed. So shock valving is huge. Of course, there's a lot of variables in what we're talking, you know, different spring packages, different rear suspension packages will make a difference. If your shock tuner or your shock supplier asks you the correct questions, what kind of car you got, what's the car weigh, what tires you're on, what's your driving style, what's your motor combination, all of that comes into play on picking the right shocks. For more information on this or any other AFCO products, check us out at AFCORacing.com.